the thrive. Jesus! Okay. Welcome back to Strong Midcard Podcast. It's been a long time since I had somebody else with me doing the shows. I haven't done a podcast in like two weeks, and a lot, a lot of shit has gone it? down. Ooh-wee. But uh, let's go to the most, uh, the more <laughs> recent stuff. Um, so, I guess one of the bigger stories that are coming out of the last couple of weeks is that NXT finally got their first win for the Monday, for the Monday night, for the Wednesday night wars. Uh-huh. Um, of course, they needed a lot of help. And even with those guys, they yeah. still only won marginally. Like, yeah. And only really won because more old people watched. 50 plus? Yeah, man. It's like, yeah, it's a victory. And, and if you're just a hardcore NXT fan, it's it's great. And, you know, if you're a hardcore WWE fan, it's great and all that shit. But it should be almost disheartening, too, the fact yeah. that, you know, that it's only because of these. They needed a lot of help. Yeah. They needed a lot of help to they get had a there. lot of star power and a lot of... And, and this whole Survivor Series thing, which really started off with the whole freaking um, Saudi Arabia Saudi thing. plane thing. Like, it just led to this clusterfuck that we're currently in. So, Survivor Series was yesterday. Uh, NXT came out on top, getting a lot of big victories. Adam Cole had a great match against uh, Pete Dune. Pete Dune. And um, the women won. The NXT women won. Um, and the uh, NXT men had a great showing, especially uh, Keith Lee. Keith Lee. All right, so uh, NXT going forward, what do you see? They are going to start mixing in with the main roster. You think um, so? They're going to bring back the... Uh, wild card? Wild, card. wild card's making a comeback. I was comeback. joking, but... <laughs> wild card, I'm, I think I I'm might be sure right. it's making a comeback. Um, they're going to bring Kevin Owens back to NXT. Mm-hmm. Um, even after tonight? Even, I, I, oh, well... I didn't watch Raw. Okay, well, I did. Um, he had a thing with Seth Rollins. It looks like he might have a thing with Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins might have a thing with the AOP. Okay. But go ahead. So that shit's on my theory. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's yeah. go with your theory. Let's, okay, so okay. obviously Keith Lee is going to be... He, um, Man, McMahon, McMahon, McMahon salivating. fucking loves Keith Lee, and that's great for him. Dude. Look at how big he is. It's funny that Triple H you know, didn't really have anything for him in NXT. Yeah, I always wondered if it's if it's one of those things where he's like so talented that they know they can pull the trigger on him whenever. And yeah, and then I think Vince got his hands on him and Triple H just like fuck. Yeah, he's like, wait, who's that back there? No, nah, nobody, man. No, we'll no, see no, no, you guys no. in a bit. No, wait, 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 wait. Who's no, that? that big guy? Who's that big piece of oh, chocolate yeah. back there? <laughs> so um, give him to me. Vince is gonna ruin him, obviously. Uh, okay, let's say he goes to the main roster at the beginning of the year, right? Yeah. How long before he becomes dancing fool? Sexual chocolate too. <laughs> yeah, because uh, that's all he knows how to do is like, there they would. It's not like people is, people they see a big guy and they go, oh, Vince gonna love him. He's gonna push him to the moon. It's like, not really. What he does is he pushes him to lose to his main guy. Yeah, that's what the real push is. He, I mean, yeah. ask anybody. You know what I mean? Like the what the Undertaker, the rare, the rarity because he stuck around for so goddamn long. Uh-huh. And you know, but like you know, Nash was another, also another rarity but like all the guys through the 2000s that came in that were just big dudes and they just got kind of groomed to lose to who John Cena or whoever you know and then the Roman push is coming back so yeah because Roman did beat him you need after someone, everything you're gonna need someone to put Roman back in that uh, spot so. Seth did a mighty fine job of doing that oh, the last Jesus. month so I think uh, yeah, I know I think Keith Lee is gonna have a program with uh, Roman I think Keith Lee is gonna beat Adam Cole because I know Keith Lee's doing great, but I don't see him as ready for the main roster. I see no, Adam no, Cole. No, no, and that's the problem. Oh, we, don't think, uh, we don't think it's uh, the uh, Vince. Very good point. Very good point, sir. In Vince's eyes. Point taken. <laughs> big mother, big fucking dude. Yeah. Talented as sh- sh- like No business moving that way. Yeah, dude. He, he's the Vader of this generation. Mm, yeah. and um, He's Bam Bam of this generation. He's Bam Bam of this generation, dude. And, and Vince is going to capitalize on that. And... Whether it goes good or bad, as we have yet to to see. But I mean, a guy like Keith Lee, I think he needs to come in as a face first. Yes. Because if you come in as a heel and you lose, what's left after you lose? Yeah. Look at Braun Strowman. Yeah. People lo- people now? love Keith Keith Lee. Yeah. yeah. He's got a great smile. You can tell he's like a big fucking teddy bear. Oh, dude. You know what I mean? 
but it's like when he, and then when he turns it on, he's one of those guys that when he turns it on, he it, it's like oh it clicks. You're like yeah. oh shit. I like, can't see him as a heel. Like he's like, too oh, likable as a dude. Piss you off, you know. Like I, the way I see it, Undisputed Era, Adam Cole especially, are ready for the for the main roster. Oh, dude, they're stars. Yeah, Adam Cole is Shawn Michaels, man. Yeah. He proved it last night. I was like, holy shit! Like, I mean, we all have kind of said that when he first yeah. was aching to go. We're like, oh, he's he's Shawn Michaels. He's the next Shawn for Michaels. Sure. Like yeah. the rest of the world, we've been saying that forever. And he's proven it. And he's proven it. But I think he's oh, as far as like as Matt goes, uh, Matt technician stuff goes, he's better than Michaels. Yeah. But everything else is such a you know. I mean, Michaels is still the big match guy. Adam Cole needs that one big. I mean these these matches have been big. I, I think these two matches that he had have been at big. Takeover and, and then at, at Survivor Series. Yeah, I think he's established, dude. You think so? I think. I so. think he's still one away. I think he's still. I need that classic, the Gargano fight, the last one. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of got bored about halfway through. Uh-huh. You know, but I need I need a match where where he is, where everything is on display. Dude, he need him and Roman <clears throat> need to put on a clinic. I would love to see him and Roman go because Roman can be strong guy. Yeah. To his, um, you know, resilient guy. Yeah, and it, if he gets one out over on Roman, like yeah, after an epic, or even uh, I would love to see him go up against Finn Balor. I think him and Finn Balor can put on that match. Yeah. So or him and Keith Lee. This is what I'm calling. I'm I'm thinking Keith Lee is gonna be Adam Cole for the title. That's the way I'm I'm if I'm booking it, that's how I'm booking <laughs> yeah. it because Keith Lee still it's great, and you just gotta have him in the background waiting waiting, yeah. but. By your, I think Adam Cole's ready to go now. Yeah, but take up have... Adam Cole and keep give Keith Lee the rub and have him win the title. But in reality, uh, and Riddle too, by the way, he's ready. Yeah. But in reality, uh, Keith Lee's gonna get called up. Uh, like, yeah, probably. Yeah, if not by this Friday, then you know. It's like yeah, look, like I was telling you when I texted you, I'm like this. To me, it just seemed like a, like a, a showcase of who Vince wants to take. Yeah, it's like uh, Rhea you're... Ripley, Rhea. um, fucking Keith Lee. Let's talk about Rhea Ripley, dude. Good showing, Jesus, dude. She's a fucking star. Yeah, <clears throat> and and I don't know if they'll push her as good as they did with Charlotte. The thing is, the the main roster stuff. They're so obsessed with the four horsewomen, then nobody else can do anything. Yeah, it's all revolved around those four women, and nothing else can happen. With everybody else is just waiting in the wings. Like every now and again, you'll get somebody like Carmelo win, yeah. or uh, you know. Uh, Alexa Bliss and man, yeah. Alexa Bliss is like yesterday's news. You thought it was gonna be her. She's yeah. so injury prone. What the fuck happened to Nia Jax? You know what I mean? Like there's there's all these combustible elements as far as the women go because you have a lot of talented women, but it's like a, you know a bunch of talented women and uh, what's her face the uh, Lacey Evans. <laughs> <laughs> all these talented Lacey Evans. Yeah, there's all these talented women. Lacey Evans. <laughs> the NXT women's division is like, goddamn. And with Rhea Ripley, I don't know if she's the best, but she's the biggest star right now, I think, coming out of there. Candice is probably, I would say, closer to being... Tony Storm, dude. Io Shirai is a fucking Io mega Shirai, star that they'll ruin. Dude. Leave her alone. If anything, if anything that NXT has over AEW, for sure, it's the women's oh, division. Oh, yeah, for, sure. They, for did, sure. they did a great job of that. They murder AEW on a yeah. women's division. Yeah, and most other freaking... And most other, you know, yeah, promotions. Yeah, Impact is up there. Impact's got a great women's division. Uh, For a little while... Wrong, Ring of Honor had a, a decent women's division. Oh, that joke! And we'll sh- we'll see what the fuck's happening there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously, except for the, the the obviously, you know, the organizations that are just women. We're talking about the you know the bigger ones. I would say, yeah, NXT is number one, with Impact probably number two, and then I guess AEW be a number three, and then ROH. Yeah. Whatever's left of the ROH women's division, and they don't even have a champion right now. So. Uh, yeah, I think Rare Ripley, um, just as far as star power, is ready to go. She hung in there with Charlotte in the match and, and Sasha, so she's. I think she can be called up right now because they definitely need a palate cleanser with those the four horsewomen yeah. and not Ronda Rousey. I think Shayna Baszler is uh, unfortunately... I think she'll go when Ronda comes back. You think so? And there's going to be a conflict there. The, the money is not in the four horsewomen against the four horsewomen anymore because the other two four horsewomen are nowhere near ready to fucking even be on NXT. I think the train has left on the... I oh, think, one. yeah, I think the money is on Baszler, Baszler and Ronda. Yeah. I mean, Becky, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of over Becky. And I hate to say that because I lo- I have loved Becky for such a long yeah. time. But it's just like the same shit. Fuck, dude. The, the whole get man, her away from Charlotte. The Jesus. whole man gimmick. Yeah. The whole, yeah, we get it. It was cool at first. And right. now, I don't know, man. They, they, what WWE does is they beat things into the fucking <laughs> ground. I don't 
We loved her. We were happy for her. And I was yeah. just like, all right, God, we get it. Fuck. Yeah, but I mean, as far as, you know, people getting called up, getting paid more, that's great. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, you know, those are the ones that I think... Keith Lee, yeah. dude. And, and Kofi opened up the door for... Uh, African American uh, champion, like main guy. I main mean, guy. look I'm, on the flip side, what happened to Kofi now? Ah, fuck That's some kind of scared about it but, too. But my my hope with Keith, Keith Lee is that he'll win it, and they have a decent dude. They put Keith Lee over Brock Lesnar. Oh, dude, forget about it. But th- they're still being held hostage by Brock Lesnar. That's the thing that that drives me nuts. It's like. <laughs> Okay, now, when he shows now, up, he shows up. Bro. Raw, well, let's, fuck, let's just talk about Raw right now. Raw right. sucks so bad. Yeah. And then their champion is not going to be on TV again. Yeah. I so mean, you have a bunch of guys that are floundering around fighting for nothing. Seth already fought Brock. Are they going to push that as a narrative? Or is Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins going to be the main thing? But what are they fighting for? They're not fighting for anything. Yeah, there's nothing on the line. Yeah, Rey Mysterio just won the U.S. title tonight. So well, what the hell is AJ going to do? He's just kind of floundering around too. Like, it, Raw is so bad. That's their problem. They have way too many guys. It's not so much even that. It's just that they're fighting for nothing because Brock's always going to end up winning. That's the thing is that for like for what? Who cares if What's they win? What's the appeal, dude? Yeah, it's... there is no appeal. What's the appeal of Brock Lesnar having the championship? I don't. Is that a sick joke? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's a troll. Who the fuck knows? Oh, girl, you got us, dude. Fuck. Yeah, you won. Fuck for the love of God, just stop. All right, we got it. We we yield. All right, so we're trying to look at some positive things, and of course, we always have to turn it into <laughs> negative. Let's stay on the negative. <laughs> big list of people that want out of there okay so um you know i mean we know the obvious um harper uh miles jordan just got his release uh, forced and he forced it props to him for it, fucking it forcing it. the hand on that end if you hate what what was what he's standing for what was going on you, you gotta good. give him props yeah. balls straight balls and said fuck you to the everybody balls. demanded a release and fucking got it the balls, of, yeah, he fucking got it. And that's not the nerf, but the massive balls of this dude to, yeah. to go against Vince. And, and I mean, like I like the ACH already. Yeah, <laughs> god damn, I love him now, dude. Where do you think he ends up? Um, I think people are gonna let stay it, tentative with him at first. Let it cool down. A little I bit. could see New Japan picking him back up again for a okay. few shows and doing, you know, maybe a couple of stints over there. Um, obviously, Impact doesn't give a fuck. They have no shame. They'll go get whoever. Yeah, Rick, they'll go fuck. They picked up Rick Swan right away after his controversy. I mean, which luckily it, it ended went, up yeah. being, yeah, being more of a kind of domestic thing and less of a jail type thing. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think Impact is a great destination for him. I don't think AEW would pick him up no. because he's a little bit too... Too controversial. Probably. Not so much even that. It's just, what do you do with them? You know what I mean? Like true, and it just looks too much like okay. It's like let's let's get him. What do we do with him? And people are gonna be like, you just picked him up because Pretty he left WWE. Yeah. Impact is perfect for him. Yeah, New yeah. Japan, AW if Ring of Honor, him. even though he has real beef with them, but if they were serious about like trying to change everything, uh-huh. they need to go after him too. I want to say he's a great ambassador for like the US expansion, mm-hmm. but I mean he's. I mean, who, you never know. He has the chance to to be what he wants to be now. He's Who's, a great maybe, fucking wrestler. Maybe he has that in him, that kind of character. You know yeah. what I mean? But he definitely deserves a chance. Uh, MLW. MLW is yeah, in the game yeah. now, too. Yeah. So, who so knows? We'll see. Yeah. Mean, there's plenty of doors. You, I mean, you, you can hate his, like, the controversy and everything, but his talent is fucking great. Undeniable. So, that'll that'll fucking make everybody quiet, quick. <laughs> For sure. Um, who else? Uh, Sin Cara, you know. Tunico, right? It's under that mask? Oh, yeah, it's Tunico. Doesn't WWE mask. own the name uh, Sin Cara? So, they can let him go whenever. Just let him go. He's a fuck. He'll go to Mexico. Yeah, or Puerto Rico, or whatever. Yeah. MLW, like put another that's not gonna someone that's not gonna hurt you. Put another guy under that mess, you know. No shit, right? Just let the guy go. Get the um, fuck. Who else? Uh, Orny Lori can just ask for it. That one shocked me. That one didn't shock me at all. Really? They don't do anything with him. I, He's a yeah, gatekeeper there, dude. Fucking, yeah, yeah, you're He's right. He's a gatekeeper there, dude. He can do more than that. Yeah, I get. Yeah. I, th- I could see him going to the UK. So fucking talented. He's like too. a UK style kind of guy. I could see him going to the UK like, and fucking, fucking revitalizing it over yeah, there. Yeah, NXT UK killed that shit. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, NXT fuck, WWE right. killed the uh, fucking independent movements over there in, in, in the UK. All those great promotions. But really, I mean, anybody would be right to pick him up. Even AEW would be right to pick him up. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, MLW AEW. for sure. Impact for sure. Like Ring of, like I said, Ring of Honor. If they really want to make. Uh, to stick around they need to start signing some of these people <laughs> they need to uh, remain relevant somehow now here's the thing is you know Mike Canellis also asked obviously uh, but he just signed a five year he ain't going nowhere dumbass. well you never know because actually that brings me to the next point I was also hearing and reading that they're actually considering 
dropping some people. Oh, the 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 spring after Mania uh, uh, releases. Yeah, that they do releases. Um, because also think... you have uh the revival. They're good as gone. You think so? Revival. Fuck yeah. Revival's gone, dude. Revival is fucking gone. After Mania, I'm sure they're gone. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. For sure. Luke Harper. Luke Harper, yeah. Yeah, he's fucking gone, dude. And he can go and be an agent and be a wrestler still, because I know he's in his 40s, but or just I think he just hit 40. Yeah. But he can still go. It's not like he's been using his body that much, and he's got a lot of experience, so he can, like, experience-wise, he can be an agent, and he can be a fucking performer, so. So, who knows? Whoever picks him up would be a good pickup, I think. Uh, who let's else? see. There's been rumblings that supposedly a lot of people are like trying to get out, but nobody's really saying anything. Orny Lorcan was the interesting one because he didn't say anything on social media. He straight up asked them, and then Triple H comes out and says, "Stop asking you social media and blah blah." blah. And then he talk fucking, to us. He, he retorted, us. "I asked you, motherfucker. I yeah, spoke, I spoke face to face with you. Yeah. So props <laughs> to him, man. Also balls. Yeah, uh, Triple H is kind of a hypocrite here." Yeah, I mean, with, for, with for, whole, for as much good as he does, he always yeah. falls back into... With the whole talk to us shit, like, I'm sure that's the first thing they do. I'm you sure they, they, he probably ignores everybody like they do with Luke Harper, just like hide from her. Yeah. Is that Harper? Yeah, fuck. All right. fuck. Uh, Give me that wig. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that, uh, the, the, what was his first gimmick? The... Uh, the, oh, the fucking terrorizer. Terrorizer head wig. Give me that terrorizer wig. <laughs> oh, man. So, hopefully, there'll be some releases coming soon. Just let go of the people that don't want to be there. That's Honestly, right. especially if it's people that aren't going to, like, put a dent in your wallet. Fine. Let them out, dude. Stop putting people hostage. They have a lot of wrestlers, dude. Yeah, they have, have a lot of people. Many. So, fucking relax. Yeah. All right. And finally, let's finish off with our favorite guy for WWE Talk anyway. Seth Rollins. His new thing on Twitter is going at CM Punk now. Because he got his feelings hurt by CM Punk. Oh, yeah, by the way, CM Punk's back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we totally... Oh, fuck. We totally fucking... We've been talking about him coming back okay. for how long, and then the last couple of weeks we didn't even do a podcast. <laughs> we were just like, eh. It was yeah. so underwhelming. It's, it's this 40-year-old guy, you know, losing relevance. You think so? It's he's losing much. relevance, and he's like, you know, I suck at fighting. I put my heart and soul into the UFC. I mm -hmm. got my ass kicked twice. You know, Dana probably, you know, uh, probably ashamed that he brought me in. Oh, I'm sure he is, yeah. Uh, w was he going to do announcing for the UFC? It wasn't UFC, a yeah. um, uh, smaller, kind of one of their feeder leagues. Okay, so is he still doing that? He's still, he's still doing that, yeah. Okay, well, good for him if he does that. Um, but coming back to dad events... It's definitely, it's definitely a money thing. I mean, I'm sure AEW... I think the thing was that I'm sure AEW was like, we want you as a performer. Yeah, he's like, nah. He's probably like, uh, I'm sure he's hitting the ring now. And the, I know there's a lot of podcasts out there going, he's an employee of Fox, but to not see what's really going on. What's he talking about? He's doing an angle already. What, what's there's he an angle about? going on already, What's dude? he talking about when he when he's talking in this Fox show? Yeah. Criticizing the, the, criticizing the WWE, right? Yeah. Fox bought the fucking WWE. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Name and, and shows and whatnot, and, yeah. and they're gonna bring someone to criticize it. Exactly. So, 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 so could someone explain that to me? I mean, like, to kind of to kind of ignore the fact that these that they're doing an angle right now. Uh -huh. Come on, dude. Like, it's called WWE backstage. No? Yeah. <laughs> what am I missing here? Dude? Yeah, because I don't see any other like off. You know, like somebody who doesn't wrestle, kind of analyst <laughs> going on there, right? I see special guests. Yeah. Every week, but. He's going to be there to be an analyst, right? What am I missing here? Are they talking about soccer? No? So anyways, let's talk about like he is coming back. Okay. Him and Seth. Uh, you think Seth still has it in him? Because it feels like he's only known, he only does one kind of match now. Like he's so in there. there. I think Seth has uh, so much animosity towards the, the fans now. Mm -hmm. That he's just going to ham it in. He's just going to phone it in with... with uh, even with CM Punk? Even with CM Punk. Hmm. For CM Punk to, like, like I was telling you, it was like, we can say that he is coming back, and there's always that error that he might not come back, yeah. that, but I don't care. if point. he does come back, they ruined what could have been the biggest pop. pop ever. Yeah. That's how I was like, <sighs> like, him coming back at Royal Rumble, yeah. or an appearance on Raw just out of nowhere, and a Chicago you know. show, something like that, like, 
unexpected. He just shows up, finally answers Seth Rollins. Like, you know what? You want me? You got You're me. Gonna, it's something cool like that, and they completely fucking blew it like they always do now. Oh, dude, that they was a can't. major fucking botch on, that, on their behalf. Mm-hmm. If they were going to do an angle, they blew it already. Yeah, so it's like now even if he does come back, okay, whatever. He still has to prove it in the ring, and I'm not sure he can anymore. So he was never knows? that great of a wrestler. Yeah, he's he's he, he's good. He can put on a good match for sure. Someone put him over but now, Styles. But now... I don't know. Oh my I god! Now. I read that. I almost fucking punched my laptop, dude. <laughs> He's like, because uh, AJ Styles. Uh, someone put uh, CM Punk over AJ Styles and and like a ranking, like and and and, and as a wrestler. And I'm like, oh fuck! Come on, dude. It's pretty close, but AJ has the bigger match. I, I mean, let's take their best matches in WWE. CM Punk versus <laughs> I say Undertaker was a better match than him and Cena. Or, uh, Cena's a better okay let's put it down there Cena and Punk versus Cena and AJ Styles those two matches Cena and AJ Styles both destroyed. great Cena and AJ Styles all those those two matches they had or three right those three man. Th- those three matches but the one that AJ won yeah they both brought it dude and that was a great match well, those were great and matches. AJ won clean yeah with CM Punk uh, if yeah it, they it, still kind of did the Lurnitis they did thing. a little shitty like yeah, Lurnitis coming out so he didn't beat him clean. So. I mean, I'm, it's obviously like a way to wash his ball. So they, they want him back, but they don't want to go out there and completely tell him that they want him back. I, I get it. It's, I'm sure that there's still... He has his one foot in, one foot out. I'm sure that he's like, okay, if I stay on Seth, if I do decide to come back, I have something to build with. Okay. If I don't, fuck him. But I'm sure that there's like a... You know, there has to be back and forth communication. Um, whether he does or he doesn't, at this point, if it's Seth Rollins, I don't really care. Yeah, I don't give a shit. If he comes back and challenges Adam Cole... My ears hurt. <laughs> Kevin Owens, okay. Huh? Like, you know, even AJ Styles. Yeah. That'd be the big one. Shinsuke. Okay. Yeah, you can pick Matt Riddle. Brian, dude. Daniel Bryan. Hell, Brock Lesnar. That'd be interesting. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I know they fought before, but I was like, this time it's like, well, CM Punk's not just going to lay down for you in five minutes. No. So they, they, that, that would actually give me a shouldn't be like, oh, he's going to want a different kind of match. Daniel Bryan, Finn Balor. Fucking, you and, know. And from fuck. what I hear, him and Lesnar are pretty, pretty yeah, they're, tight. Yeah, they're pretty tight. So I'm sure Lesnar and him would, would do it. Uh, Lesnar will work with him. Yeah. So you have so many, fuck, Rey Mysterio. Like, yeah, sure. you know what I mean? So many different options. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns would be an interesting match. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Seth Rollins from five years ago against mm, CM Punk. Yes. Okay. But I don't know if Seth, like like, like you said, I don't know. He just looks like he's just conditioned to have that he match. He needs to bring that blood. Streak block, uh, the blonde, blonde streak. He needs to bring the blonde yeah. back. And then we'll like him again. Yeah, then he can really burn it down. So I'll burn it down. I'll, I'll buy it. I'll sing along too. Yeah, yeah, burn it down, whatever. All right. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get to this real quick. Ring of Honor. What the fuck is going on with Ring of Honor, man? Who knows? And we've been bashing on it for like the last year. Yeah. But it seems like it all's coming to the, to the head now. Um, Kelly, Kelly, uh, Kelly Klein, their women's champion, was recently let go via email. Email, yeah. Um, because she kind of spoke out on stuff. So as far as like their treatment and the pay and everything, and now she's gone. It definitely looks bad on their part. They look very out of touch yeah. and just so wrapped up in their own bullshit. Um, not only that, uh, Mercury is just dropping bombs. Oh my God. Yeah, he is. Like, uh, Flip Gordon apparently asked him, why are we booking all these fucking gates that we can't sell? Yeah. And then he sent him a text that he got from the general manager saying, well, fuck Flip, he can't draw. Ask him why he can't draw. Fuck, dude. Just kind of, you know what I mean? Like, fucking uh, talking shit on him that way. It's getting really out of hand. Like, Marty Skrull, you know, they're freaking out. They wouldn't give him the title because they thought he was going to leave anyway. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the basic rule for everybody else is like, all right, well, let's give him the title. He can build somebody on his way out. Yeah. Kenny did that. You know, a bunch of people have done that in the past. Why not do that now? And they decided to just balk on your most popular guy and give it to Matt Taven, who I understand, like, I've vouch for the guy because he's a homegrown guy but not the time not i mean, I understand why they did it yeah but it fucking flopped it flopped bad dude. okay it flopped because you didn't build anybody for him in the meantime no he was that's what i'm saying like taven is a great guy because he's so hateable yeah on a real aspect and also as a character aspect perfect to build your next baby face off of and you didn't you, fucking, you fucking do it you that. didn't fucking do it and now look at you like imagine if you were to build up marty so you beat Taven, the guy who everybody hates. Yeah. How big that would have been. Or Flip. Like, I was pushing for... Why is Flip not the face of your fucking company? 
You know, like, we're pushing hard for Flip. Yeah. In face of that company. Like, fine. Yeah. You want Taven to be your number one heel guy? Because he's a, that's perfectly fine. A great heel needs to build up a good baby face, though. Yeah. Flip has got everything going for him. And, you know, you don't build him. You 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 let him go with Marty. And now, if you know, Marty, he owns Villain Enterprises and uh, Villain Club and all that stuff. So, if he goes and decides to take all his guys with him, shit. What do you dude, have? <laughs> you have nothing. Literally. Marty's your most popular guy there. You have uh, Bully Ray. <laughs> A bully Rand is in his girlfriend, and it, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I think the, uh, the, I think uh, Roosh is on his, uh, his contract's almost up too. Thank God, dude. They're holding. They're he's wasting his talents there. I, I mean, he's the man, but he's the man there right now. Yeah. But it's like uh, I yeah. even forgot that he was the championship. And started started doing research for the day. I was like, holy shit, I forgot about that. I feel bad for guys like um, like long. Long veterans, tenured, guys. veterans of, of of our age, yeah. Like, that are whoever's held left, down. yeah. yeah. Sil- uh, Silas Young, yeah, just... uh, guys like that, uh, Jay Lethal, all these dudes. The kind of who knows what's gonna happen to those guys because they're up there. I mean, especially Jay Lethal, he's up there in, in age and just Billy Corgan just buy Ring of Honor already. <laughs> you think he? I don't know if they're for sale, but the whole NWA thing's kind of yeah taking too much of. A... Well, I mean, we'll get to that real niche. quick. But, but anyway, uh, Ring of Honor, Honor, yeah, our, they need a, a lot of fixing. I kind of want you guys to fucking tank because I want Marty and AEW mm-hmm. and the whole villain enterprise. Yeah, and I don't want I don't want there be to I don't want there to be incentive for Marty to stay. I don't think they have enough money to keep him. No, he's Honestly. way too fucking popular. Yeah, I don't think they can do it. He's bigger than an ROH. Yeah, think. exactly. So, um, all right. Nice segue into AEW, and um, really, I mean, they're doing all right. But the only really thing that that's news right now is um, the Bash at the Beach thing, and they're possibly getting sued over too, using yeah. it, even though they don't owe, they own the rights to it now. Yeah. So that's kind of weird and confusing. I think they just they're just trying to do it to be dicks. Petty fucking. But also, it also brings up a, a good point. Are they taking too many WCW things? I think they were going for that. They were going with that from the get go. Mm-hmm. I think that's their whole plan, but not not go with the NWO route. Do WCW right? Okay. So, yeah, I think they they want to do a WCW. I mean, because WCW for what it was, it was I, gr- it was great. Yeah. They made the whole NWO angle. Um, dude, mm, fuck. The beginning. Yeah. Like the first year. Yeah, the first year was great. Jesus, dude, that that fuck, and it changed wrestling. They're not, they're obviously not gonna have, have guys like Hogan, Nash, and mm. people that that book themselves. True, uh, which, even though they could, yeah, and they, they kind of do. They kind of do. They kind of do. But, but at the same time, come on, the Bucks have put out, yeah, put over the majority of the guys they go against. And Cody has too. Yeah, Cody has put Kenny. Kenny, I mean, the elite has put put over the the inner circle, mm. which is guys guys are trying to build up. I mean, they, they can be dicks and, and take the spots, take all the belts, whatever. But um, it, it would it wouldn't be to their benefit, and you know we would call it we would call that bullshit, you know. So you don't think they're doing too much WCW stuff? <laughs> I I, I, well, the, I have the, the, a hard the, time with it. Um, I can see kind of like doing it in honor of. Yeah. So like if, you know the the Bash of the Beach thing is not going to be a pay-per-view event. It's going to be a, a one, not a one-off, but like a special highlighted uh, edition of Dynamite. Yeah. I don't mind that because that's almost that's like right, Clash yeah. of Champions. Yeah, that's right. Like a uh, Clash of the Champions, sorry, <laughs> um, that they used to do, WCW used to do like randomly on Wednesdays. Yeah. Like that one Wednesday out of the month or every other month or something like that, they do a Clash of the Champions, which I fucking love those. So um, like to call, if they're going to do it for Dynamites, I don't mind it. But to do it for pay per views is like, all right, dude, that's a little bit too much. And then yeah. he just bought the rights to the Rhodes names. Really? So, yeah. So that's also part. Um, I don't know if the intellectual property goes with it because I, I know they can't use war games. WWE actually has that. But I know they, they have the Match Beyond, which was, I think, the original name for it. Yeah. So, and the Bunkhouse Stampede, I think they also bought that. Um, maybe if to do variations of it, but I don't think they should take the whole name. Like, Bash of the Beach could easily be turned into something else. Like, yeah. you know, the the you know beach whatever something you know what i mean beach fun like beach day dynamite i think they're trading on very dangerous grounds this early you think yeah especially oh, with, with wcw comparisons only that everything else is fine but it's been positive though it has but i'm saying like the reception of, of the fans has been positive doing your own thing though that's what that's, yeah you're right yeah. doing your own thing is what i want to 
touch on. It's like I want them to build off of their own thing. Like like I said, th- in honor of. In honor of, but still doing I, your own. I like this. Like, okay, Bash of the Beach, a special edition of Dynamite. Cool. Yeah. Keep it that, like one-offs and that kind of stuff. But don't, like, completely just grab onto WWE. Look, we all miss WCW, man. But, I mean, nobody more. I was a big fucking WCW, yeah. Mark. So, I mean, into the fucking very end, too. <laughs> so... I don't know. I just hope that they kind of, you know what I mean? Like, just stay original. Stay yeah. doing your own. Try to keep doing your own thing. Yeah. And like I, I said, to honor stuff, awesome too. But this, for the this, most part, they yeah. are, dude. <laughs> like, 90% of the time, they are. Yeah, I think it's just because maybe people saw... I think it's uh, more or less just ownership. That's what I'm hoping for. That's, yeah. why, that's why he did it. Okay. To have ownership of things that his dad came up with. Yeah. Keep it in his family. I'm hoping that's what it is. So, like, this one-off, I'm completely fine with, so... But hopefully it just doesn't become too much. I just want to see where, you, where your thoughts were about that. All right. So let's wrap it up with uh, two things about uh, two pricks. So first we'll start off with uh, your boy and our boy, my boy, everybody's boy, Jim Cornette. And that whole fucking debacle. So, yeah. um, I mean, I've been bashing <laughs> New UA Power. Not because I hate it. I just think it's so cornball-y. And, uh, but I'm glad it's around. Like I always say, I'm glad it exists because yeah. there's people who love that shit. And I love how people talk about it, but when I try to watch it, I'm just like, I can't do this shit. Like, yeah. it's just too, it's too, too Midwest. Too 80s. <laughs> it's too 80s. I can't. I, I, I'm. I like being in 2019. That you feels I mean? like a parody. Yeah. The NWA anyway, feels like a parody. It feels like yeah. So, um, but I mean, like I said, the same. I don't want it to go away. But that's if you great. ask me what I think about it, that's what yeah. I think about it. I love that. Yeah. There's an audience for it. That's great. Yeah. And uh, but coming off of that, <laughs> uh, they've had Jim Cornette as a color commentator. Okay. Not bad. I like Cornette for the most part. Yeah. I like Cornette when he tells old stories, when he has shooting interviews and he talks about the old days or the stuff he went through in ROH and Impact, when he goes off on Russo, <laughs> talks about the old Midnight Express, the old terror story. I'll sit there and listen to him because he's a great storyteller. He's, yeah. I hate when he talks about anything current. I don't listen to his current podcast. I don't think I'm serious. Yeah, when they, they have clips of it, it's like, oh, he talks about, uh, you know, Bruiser Brody. I'm like, okay, I, I'll listen to that. But it's like, oh, reviews Kenny Omega's yeah, match. Like, I'm like, never mind, because you're just out to, to hate. Like, we know, we know, we, we pretty much know the summary. You yeah, know? dude, you're 58 and you're still acting like a fucking little kid. Like, <laughs> so, anyway, speaking of that, um, so his mouth gets him in a lot of trouble, obviously. He's yeah. fucking world renowned for that. And he has his followers and people like him. So people followed him to the NWA Power thing. Yeah. You know, and he dropped the fucking what is perceived to be a racist joke, and you can see how it could be. You yeah. could also see how how just kind it's of a one ball yeah. stupid joke it was. But the fact that it's two thousand nine and, and it was having to do with Ethiopia and bucket of chicken and driving a motorcycle with a uh, Dick Murdoch and the was starvation Murdoch, joke, Travis yeah. Murdoch, Trevor Murdoch. Yeah, the starvation that he claims a starvation joke. So That's the his, joke yeah. itself, it went through. The shows have been in the can for about six weeks now. Yeah. Uh, David Lagana, who's the producer and editor, um, did not edit it out. So it went out. Somebody caught it. Took offense. Yeah. Blasted all over Twitter and, and everything. And now he's gone. Yeah. Um... Any defense or should he know better? Okay. And Where do you stand the, on it? Okay. The joke wasn't even that... It's an old cornball. It's all like eighties, you know. Yeah, I you know I grew up listening to Carlin. I grew up listening to Pryor to, you know, raunchy fucking comedy. Yeah, and that joke was just like cornball fucking. It's, it's like, a terrible joke. It's a yeah. it's a dumb joke. Yeah. Not because it's offensive, but it's just a bad joke. But do I think he's racist? No, I don't think Ornette's a racist. Did the, the, the joke come off like? Mm. Yeah, I mean. He's had a few instances where people have. I've. I've this heard, isn't his first it's one. It's because I've heard worse jokes. Yeah. That have been worse than what he said. I'm okay, just... but that doesn't make him any less no, racist. No, it, it was a slip of the tongue. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's Cornette. Cornette's going to try to do anything to get a fucking reaction. Reaction. And, 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 and I think it's the fault of the person who was editing. Mm. They should have caught it. Okay. They you should have caught it. They yeah. should have brought okay. it up to credit. Like, sorry, dude, we cannot use this. It's 2019. Okay. What the fuck is wrong with you? Don't... <laughs> yeah. Because that joke, that, in 2019, that joke does not deserve any any, any primetime, like, yeah. uh, exposure. It's, it's, it's had its yeah. it's it's time to it had its time. be said. Yeah. You know, the 80s, 90s yeah. were fucking the Wild West when it came to comedy. Yeah. Now we're in a, we're, we're in a, uh, we're in an era where, where everything is monitored. Mm-hmm. 
every little joke is is everybody's feelings are accounted for so so to the detriment of comedy yep uh unfortunately you know you 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 cannot be edgy anymore and, i th- yeah go yeah. Oh, i'm sorry and, and then it sucks that 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 uh because he I, I i heard his explanation mm-hmm. and his trying to defend it mm-hmm. and i'm just like no nah, dude i just despite all that it's a stupid joke uh was it racist 50 50 yes <laughs> it's a fucking you know it's a starving ethiopian it's, joke, it's, ethiopian a joke chicken. Chicken. it's a horrible joke it's a callback to a racist um like analogy yeah bucket of chicken black people he, black he, people ethiopia dude, like you know what i mean at, he was going after japanese people back in the day oh yeah he was going after mexicans back in the day that's dude. everybody though he, that's i mean you could all watch old uh, we WWF, all got it yeah, yeah. We got all the way they used to make fun of Tito Santana and uh, you know Mr. Fuji and uh, oh, yeah. fucking head shrinkers and anybody who wasn't white. In other yeah, words, yeah, we we all got it. Okay, but that was back then. That was back. Yeah, that goes to my point. Yeah, this isn't a, this is this doesn't deserve a, a a prime time prime time spot. That type of of, of humor, especially now, you know what you're gonna platform. Yeah, you you know what you're gonna get yourself into. Yeah, and you should know. You should know better. He yeah. should know better. Uh, that's my point yeah it's a stupid joke my point is he, yeah you can blame Lagana because he didn't edit it and all that stuff at the same time he said it he's fucking 58 years old yeah. he knows what the fuck he's doing with what a lightning rod he is and he shouldn't be fucking surprised they made him pretty much they made him resign yeah. which is fine and like and like you said this year 2019 um to do anything like that, then you kind of put your yourself at you know yourself and your job at a fucking yeah. risk. You know what you're, yeah. yeah, you know what's gonna what could possibly happen if you still do like uh, I get it. Everybody wants to go back in the past yeah. in the seventies and the eighties. All oh, wrestling was blah 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 this and that. It's not that anymore. It's two thousand nineteen. These motherfuckers that don't want to change. This is the shit that you're gonna fall into if you keep fucking doing it. And it's been proven time and time again. They will fucking like Miles Jordan. We just went through that. He fucking. It beat the fucking drum until they let him go like yeah. and he got his way you know what i mean um times have changed and if you don't want to change adapt or get left behind and you know what this he just got fired from mlw earlier in the year yeah, yeah. all right like <laughs> and he fucking got fired from this too and he's been fired from impact he's been fired from everywhere because he i get it like yeah freedom of speech and he doesn't make a lot of good points but at the same time you don't make it easy on people. And, and this wasn't actually what I was reading. Is that the, this wasn't the first time Lagana had to cut out stuff and tell him, hey, and apologize for him. I know he dropped like a pedophile joke on Justin Roberts recently. That was stupid, yeah. Um, he made another joke about somebody else that got him in trouble as well. That offended some people. It had yeah. to do with like uh, some kind of suicidal thing where he told, oh, we made some joke about like, oh, that guy should kill himself for the way he was dressed. And he's playing to his audience because it was on his podcast Janela, but if you're right? if you're hired probably yeah. but if you're hired by nw power you're guess what now you're representing them too maybe tone it down a little bit yeah. until your contract is over yeah. or whatever blows over and you can then go back to fucking doing your outlaw mud show fucking podcast and motherfucker you have your own platform to to be a fucking yeah uh, to be a fucking hillbilly all you scripted. want man you, <laughs> you have your youtube channel to be unscripted and do whatever the fuck you want don't take these jobs <laughs> For these companies that are trying to come up, yeah, and doing your same bullshit that you've always done—that's gotten you fired before. Hey, you're playing a character, dude. Don't don't bring your real life persona into it. Yeah. You know? So he might not be racist, but he did a quasi semi racist joke. Yeah. And it is what it is. 2019, you're not gonna get away with that no, shit no, anymore. No, no. <laughs> and like your half ass apologies and all that like, aside, you know you can't yell at the AEW fan. Oh, they're the ones that came after me. It's these AEW fans that right. I made so mad and blah blah blah. So even if you did. At the end of the day, you still made the fucking comment. You still fucking, you know what I mean? Said that shit. Own up to it, man. Be a fucking man for once. I love that. He blames those AEW fucking fans. We're probably watching uh, uh, AEW Dark. Yeah. Instead of uh, NWA. Exactly. It was like, guess what? Those AEW fans were probably not watching NWA Power, really. <laughs> maybe there was one that snuck through and be like, hey. Hey, what is this? Yeah. Or maybe, oh, maybe how about this? Maybe you offended a black person, you fucking numb nut. Oh, maybe, maybe that's. Mm, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> fucking idiot. God damn it. Fuck Jim Cornette. <laughs> Sorry. I love his rants. Yeah. I love his. I lo- Like I said, I love his old fucking. His, yeah. When he goes off on Russo in the old days and he talks about. Oh, I, I love that because it's. You know, he was in there. You know, he was there when everything yeah. was going down. Like the Jim Hurd stuff. I love listening to that old WCW stuff. 
but like I can't listen to anything he says now because he just sounds like somebody who's mad that the that the fucking the business had the audacity to change. Yeah. How dare you? You know, leave evolving, me behind. Evolving. Yeah. Why? Like, oh no, I'm irrelevant. Fuck you. I'm gonna bash <laughs> everything you fucking love. We're like, ah, get out, get out of here. Go yell at a club. You gotta go with the times. Yeah, man. man. Adapt to get left behind. Is what they always say. Yeah. All right, moving from uh, an old prick to a slightly younger prick, <laughs> uh, another guy who can't fucking hold his tongue because he's a jackass, uh, Corey Graves. Oh, fuck. Going off on Mauro Ronaldo, who we all know. Suffers from depression. Suffers from depression, bipolar, um, made, you know, a guy who's contemplating, he comes out and said he's contemplating suicide. suicide. If you ever watched his, um, his documentary and stuff, well, like, he's very, very open about that. Um, so, so, and for a fucking prick, known prick, a guy, I, I've never liked Corey Gray, so you just, there's such a, like, he just, he, he oozes fucking cunt. Like, he uses prick. Oh, he's a proper cunt. Yeah. Corey Gray is a proper cunt. Um, but, but what was the actual context? So, Mar Ronaldo, you know, Mar Ronaldo's being, Mar Ronaldo will Mar Ronaldo on a pay per view. Especially one that's of the what cali- we love them, yeah. especially the the caliber of NXT War Games were like we said spot 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 spot. Yeah. So um he goes off and he, um Corey goes on Twitter of course Twitter, and he uh, you know right after Triple H said hey don't go on Twitter and talk shit well, anyway so Corey Graves goes on Twitter bashes a colleague of his Mar Ronaldo and just says oh yeah for you fans out there who don't know something to this effect he said there's also a um, a Hall of Famer. In the booth, and also a former Ring of Honor champion, but you probably wouldn't know that right now. So, in other words, saying Marino is just talking too much, taking up too much airspace okay. with his brand of commentary. Oh, really, Mister Fucking Button? Every fucking shut up, Saxon. Yeah. Okay, Corey fucked our grades. Yeah, it's fucking. That's what I'm. Just, that's another thing. I was like, really, dude. All you do is fucking interrupt my. And I don't necessarily like Michael Cole, uh-huh. but sometimes he would be in the middle of a sentence, and Corey Graves is like, look, Cole. Alexa Bliss is a goddess. Oh, like, shut the oh fuck God. up, asshole. <laughs> the guy was actually going to... Cole was finally going to say something interesting for once. And yeah, he fucking I mean, cut him cut off. Him Can't off. have that. <laughs> cut um, him off. Um, so, Ronaldo um, deleted his Twitter. Um, I guess he was in the building for the show. Yeah. And uh, for the Survivor Series. And uh, him and, he was with Frank Shamrock, who I think is his manager, too. And they left because Ronaldo just was having an episode, I think, or something happened. Oh, and he just, he had to go and took off his Twitter. And then Shamrock went to town on fucking Corey Graves and said, you know, guys like you, like who mouth off, should be punched in the fucking mouth. Frank, Frank Shamrock. And Frank Shamrock will fuck you oh, up, right? Dude. So keep talking okay. that shit. Yeah, keep talking, keep talking shit, that motherfucker. shit, motherfucker. You uh, will get fucked up. <laughs> these Shamrocks are fucking tanks. He ain't a pro wrestler. I mean, not anymore. He trained to be a pro wrestler for uh, Ken Shamrock when they were doing the pancreas stuff. But he, he, he fights and he will fuck you up, even at his old age. He will knock you, he will knock that stupid pompadour off your fucking head. Oh, so, wait, he already took it off. So why is uh why is why is uh Graves I don't know. so it far up his out, own ass? It like, just came out of his own. It just came out of nowhere. Why is so so far up his own ass though? Like, I'm a colleague who has known uh you know issues. So he t- he takes over the role of JBL and becomes the biggest prick of pretty much. He's trying to become the biggest. At prick least of the JBL company. had pedigree, titles. Yeah, you know what I mean. Who's this history? fucking chump? This fucking... guy, you know, uh, unfortunately for him, his stock kind of dropped because he had to quit he had to retire because of the concussions and stuff uh-huh. but you know what i mean you think that would humble somebody probably not to like be chill bigger. and calm down but like as soon as he's you want to talk about like twitter fucking fingers like graves you're the biggest fucking twitter troll you and seth like no wonder you guys are such good friends you're both fucking probably sitting next to each other talking shit on twitter like a bunch of douchebags <clears throat> so yeah he fucking does this shit and then he keeps not only that, but he keeps the Twitter. And then he goes off on Dave Meltzer for like you're spitting the the lies and negativity and all this other shit. And I was like, Dick, it's your twit. It's your Twitter. It's your, it's your tweet. Sorry, it's your it's your tweet. It's still up there. Erase it. Yeah. And then you can run your mouth. None of it is fictional. Everybody knows what happened. Yeah. Like. You can't keep guys like him that do that shit go immediately turn around and blame somebody. They blame, you know what I mean? Yeah, they blame the the whole blame the media types. Yeah, Seth does the same fucking thing, which is why he's such an ass clown on fucking Twitter too, and everybody goes at, goes at him for being a fucking jackass. It's I don't know, man. These fucking guys, I swear to God, <laughs> it's great. Twitter has has really exposed how stupid fucking these idiots are, dude. Yeah. So great, and then I don't know if he's gonna get punished or not. Probably not because you know. It'll it'll bring too much light on what happened. I don't yeah. think they're gonna fire him. At least you know, 
as much of a dick and a prick that he is, I know people enjoy him, and I think he does deserve a chance to redeem himself. But first, he's gonna have to apologize. Fucking man up. Yeah. Even JBL kind of sort of apologized. I'm sure he probably did it personally to yeah. Ronaldo, like one on one, face to face, or called him or something. Like if this prick hasn't done that by now, like fuck you, go. You know what I mean? Go fuck Carmelo. Yeah. <laughs> go fuck that six. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> she's like a fucking... Nah, she's... She's a goddess. Carmella's awesome. Graves is a douche. She's a goddess among uh, fucking... Let's put it this way. Here. Let's put it this way. Carmella is, is so hot that that's the kind of guy she'd end up with. Yeah, she's so hot <laughs> that that's, that's literally the guy she would You look at him and go, yeah, that's yeah, that's the kind of yeah, guy she would date. Yeah. yeah, tattoo guy. Tattoo guy. Yeah, she, she wants to be... <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, so... Um, okay. So let's finish it off at the, uh, right there then. Um, yeah, Graves sucks. And so does Cornette. <laughs> sad. Yeah, so... Let's, get that, these, let's put these guys on a rock and then send them out to fucking space. Seriously. So, all oh, right. Pricks. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. If you listen to this much, man, there's just a lot to talk about. Um, so, yeah, let us know what you guys think about everything that's going on with AEW, WWE, NXT, NWA Power, Jim Cornette, Corey Graves, <laughs> Ring of Honor, Impact, fucking whoever. New Japan. We actually didn't even touch on New Japan because we don't know what the hell's going on. It's, uh, There's a lot going on there. A couple more weeks and I think we'll start seeing more clear what the Wrestle Kingdom thing is going to come out to. So, all right, guys. Thank you guys for listening. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and like hit the notification bell. Um, also, follow the Instagrams and the Twitters. And we will talk to you guys later. Peace. CM Punk. Unblock me, bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. CM Punk blocked Roger. Block me because I call him a hypocrite. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's going to be my new thing. I want to get blocked by uh, Brian Alvarez or Dave Meltzer. Don't block me, man. Just <laughs> kidding. All right. Good night, guys. <laughs> Bye. One more for the good guy.